In Creo Parametric, you can create process plans or work instructions for an assembly using a little known module called ProProcess for Assemblies. In this video, I'm going to show you the results of ProProcess. Then I'm going to talk through a couple slides for background, and then I'll show you how to start a process plan. In other videos, I will complete the process plan and also make a drawing. Here's an assembly that I want to fabricate. Let me jump over to a, another window that has the actual process plan in it. And so I'm going to use the menu manager to play various different steps. Let me start at step number one and then click the OK button. And then I can choose next step. And you can see it's essentially explode states that show the process of putting this assembly together. And let me jump over to a, another window. And here is a resulting drawing. On the first sheet, we have the steps for the overall process. And then on the subsequent sheets, we have pictures that explain each individual step in the process, including a bill of materials for the components that are used. Now let's go into a little bit of background into ProProcess. And ProProcess actually has two different versions. There's ProProcess for assemblies and ProProcess for manufacturing. By the way, to use ProProcess for assemblies, you're going to need a license of the Advanced Assembly Extension or AAX. And again, these are for creating process plans, also known as work instructions. And there are a few different benefits of creating your work instructions in ProProcess. First off, you are using assembly information that you already have from the design process. Also, since Creo Parametric is associative, you can start the process plan early because any changes that you make to the assembly will be reflected in the process plan. And also with ProProcess, you can manipulate the bomb in ways different from the original design assembly. You can regroup components regardless of their subassembly structure. And also you can add other additional components like tooling and fixtures and bulk items that are not in the engineering bill of materials. And as you saw in the initial part of the demonstration, it is very outdated. I have not seen any updates to ProProcess since before Wildfire. We're talking like 2000i or earlier versions. Before we jump into the demonstration, let's cover the process very quickly. The first step is you are going to create the process assembly using the file new command. Then there's an optional step of creating fabrication units. And there are two main uses for fabrication units. That's so that you can rearrange the components from a design assembly into a new structure. Also, fabrication units can be used to include components that you want as part of the process, but aren't part of the design assembly. For example, maybe you want the container or the box that the product is going to be shipped in, along with any foam that's going to be used to hold it, maybe even an instruction manual and a warranty card. You can include those different entities in a fabrication unit. Step three, you are going to create the different steps in the process as components are assembled or disassembled or repositioned. Then you'll create a drawing and the drawing will have typically individual sheets for each process step. And then you're going to add smart tables, pro report tables to the drawing in order to capture the overall process and each individual step of the process. So with that, let's jump into the demonstration. To start off my process plan, I will click on the new icon. You can also use the keyboard shortcut of control N. I will change the type from the default part to assembly. And then over on the right hand side, here's where we have process plan. And so I'm going to name this, I'm going to use the name of the assembly. Let me call this AC60-5505 and I'll put in process plan in the name just so that I am sure what it controls. You can add a common name if you want. You'll notice that there's no option here for a default template. I will click the OK button. And here I am in my process mode. We have the model tab. You'll notice that there's just very few commands on there. And since it's outdated, it makes heavy use of the menu manager. To start off, I'm going to choose the sequence button. And then let's use new step and then assemble. 
and then I'll choose done out of here. And so the first thing that we need to do is add the model that we want to use in here. So I'm going to choose a standard component. You can also add in a bulk item for consumables or tooling for a fixture. And then we will choose the open button. I will use the quick access button to filter down to assemblies. This is the assembly that I want to create a process plan for. So I will choose the open button. And then what it does is it shows all the components in the assembly in this dashed wireframe look. And as you start picking components to use in different process steps, it's then going to make them show up in the appropriate mode on your computer screen. So I'm going to choose this part as the first component to place. And then I will choose OK. And you can see how it's showing the other different components. You can add other additional components to this step. But this is all that I want. I will click on the Done button. Let me grab this and make it a little bit wider. This is the old model dialog box that was used in Pro Engineer 2001 and earlier. And so we have a number of elements in here. And then we have the status. Then we have some action buttons down at the bottom. So we already went through defining the components for this particular step. If you want to change the components, just double click on that element in the model dialog box. And then we get the cascading menu manager again. Let me hit done out of there because I'm not going to change it. Then we have a description. And I strongly recommend that you write in a description because this is going to appear in some of the different smart tables on the drawing. And I'm just going to write in here, assemble base component. And then click the OK button. And then you have the ability to specify a simplified representation. Here's where you can do an explode state. Just one component, so I'm not going to create an explode. You can specify what drawing view or what saved orientation this step should use. Then we have a time estimate. So I'm going to use a time estimate of 0.1 for this one. And you can see that the value is in hours. This is information that can also appear in the drawing tables that you create later on. Then we have a cost estimate. And the cost estimate for this one, I'm just going to put a value of 2 in there. And so now we have all the information defined in here. So I will click the OK button. Now you can see that we have a bunch more commands available to us in the menu manager. I'm going to create one other thing in this video. Let me hit the Done Return button. There is this other kind of entity that you can create called a fabrication unit. And there are two different main uses for a fabrication unit. First off, you can use it to group components together differently from how they appear in the assembly. Or maybe you have some components that are going to be a processed fixed unit that you are going to use and they don't appear already as a subassembly. So for example, I could go to Fab Unit and then choose the Create button. Ask me for a name for the fabrication unit. I'm going to call this the Motor Fan unit and hit the enter key and then for the models that I want to use you can select on the model select the last component retrieve a representation but I'm going to use the open button and then I'm going to select the original assembly that we had here and once again it shows the different components in this grayish color and I'm going to select this component, one of the blades, and then this component for the motor. And when I'm done, I will click the OK button and then done. And by the way, I know people just hated the menu manager in Pro Engineer 2001 and earlier with all the duns and done returns and done selects. It's just basically working your way down and then working your way back up. So I will choose done. And so now I'm back into the previous window that I was using before. If you take a look at the model tree, that fabrication unit that I created does not appear in here. It's not going to appear in the tree until it's actually used in 
a step in the sequence. If you want to see what fabrication units that you have, you can click on the info button and it'll list any ones in here and then you can choose done to the selected ones and it'll show you the reference assembly and the components that are used in there. So again, that's one of those ways that you can deviate from the design structure that you have in your engineering bill of materials or in your product structure. And let me hit the done return out of there. And so in the next video, I will go through creating additional steps that will show you the buildup of the process. And then in the video after that, I will show you how to create the drawing with the various different smart tables.